Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold, fundamental and technical analysis. Um, if you like the videos I provide every week, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your fellow trading colleagues um, as it helps support the channel, right? And so um, I did receive uh, an email from uh, this gentleman and um, something that I'm going to do every now and then I'll ask, I'll answer some some what I think are some good questions um, uh, in this uh, weekly video but I'll do it after the video I'll do the analysis first but um, if you stick around until the end of the video I will give an answer to this uh, question and they say sir that they were about to ask um, or asking previously we saw Fed Reserve hike interest rates in the US and according to your teachings, once interest rate hiked, currency became strong or gained strength compared to their partner or their pair. But Wednesday after the Fed hiked rates of 0.25% uh, or 25 basis points, we saw market fall down. What is the reason, sir? Thanks. So I will answer that for you at the end of the analysis. But getting into the week ahead, 27th of March, zooming in a bit. Um, the turmoil that has hit the banking sector will continue to take investors' attention. So we are in a risk-off uh, environment due to the banking uh, sector, um, which has um, you know, sh uh, shook the um, uh, all aspects of the market, right? Um, in the US, Fed uh, Vice Chair for Supervision, Michael S. Barr, will testify before Senate and House. Also, uh, consumer income and spending, the PCE price index, and the final reading of the Q4 GDP growth will be released for the US. Elsewhere, Euro area, Germany, France, and Spain will publish inflation rate figures. Finally, uh, LFO Business, Climate, and GFK Consumer Confidence will take the spotlight in Germany. So that's um, the major um, currencies. And then we've also got um, down here, it says, actually I'll zoom out just slightly if I can, there we are. So um, in Asia, traders will focus on the Chinese March NBS PMI for updates on the impact of the country's economic opening after February's factory uh, activity expanded at the fastest pace in over 10 years. And in, Jan um, sorry, in Japan, the markets await retail sales, industrial production, the unemployment rate and housing starts for February. And in Australia, economic releases will be headlined by retail sales data and the monthly inflation print for February. And in New Zealand, the attention will fall on business confidence in March. So that's pretty much uh, the data that um, is gonna be coming out this week. So let's look at the dollar index. And uh, the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against a basket of currencies like the euro, the pound, and the yen. And um, for those of you who um, are subscribed, or even not necessarily subscribed, but have seen the community tab um, on my YouTube channel, you'll see that I did a bit of analysis on the dollar. And, um, and so let's um, see if I can just make this a bit larger for you guys to read and the analysis. And pretty much what I was saying was, <clears throat> was that um, you know the Fed are basically uh, close to um, uh, pausing their hiking rates at the moment, and the Fed is projected to hike rates at least once more before pausing, which would support the dollar at least in the short term. Yeah, so very short term. Um, but Powell's statement, which we'll get into, was taken as dovish by the markets, and the market is pricing in Fed cuts by the end of the year, which will weigh on the dollar and limit any upside moves. And the current risk off sentiment though, uh, also does support the dollar, but further banking shocks explicitly emanating from the US will put pressure on the US dollar. So there are a lot of pros and cons when it comes to understanding, um, you know, what is potentially gonna drive um, a currency higher or lower over the medium to long term. In the short term, pretty much anything can happen, right? Nobody necessarily knows. The market is more driven by um, liquidity, but <clears throat> from the perspective of understanding where we're gonna go potentially in the, in, in the um, over the next maybe six months to a year is a lot more easier uh, to uh, to project, right? And so um, 
uh, looking at from a risk off perspective, we know we're in the risk off environment because um, traders flight to safety is about the next recession. Yeah, not the banks. Um, we also have a situation where hedge funds are seen targeting Deutsche Bank in irrational slides. So um, there's definitely lots of risk off coming into uh, the market from a global um, um, uh, risk perspective and you know but more specifically looking at the dollar Powell's own guide to recessions shows rate cuts are coming so the gap between current and future short-term rate widens further and Fed will commence rate cuts at the December meeting says TD Securities and so a recession is certain and uh, so are rate cuts this year that's the message from the bond market metric Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell highlighted a year ago so the best guide to tip off economic troubles in um, as sorry as the best guide to tip off economic troubles in the US it talks about the uh, expected three month T bill rate at, in 18 months time dropped 134 basis points under the current rate uh, that's below the previous record uh, Nadir hit in um, January 2001 about two months before the US economy fell into a recession and so um, you know the bond market um, you know, uh, is, is projecting a recession and the bond market is very sensitive to interest rates in the economy and typically can lead the um, uh, Forex and typically does. And so for me, if we're talking about the US being in, you know, going into a recession in the next, you know, um, maybe, you know, nine months or so, um, it's easier to then kind of project where prices may be in the next nine months, six to nine months, three to six to nine months. Um, but in the short term, anything can happen, right? We could get a pullback for the dollar, which allows short traders to get in for better prices, right? To short because they have the expectation that by maybe July, August, September, we should be somewhere down here, right? And so <clears throat> that's really um, the play. In the short term, you can see obviously hikes supporting the dollar, which may push it higher. But over the long term, medium to long term, really, you know, my bias is to kind of short the uh, the dollar. So any pullbacks up into these types of zones where you've got supply as well as some support and resistance and even trend line uh, resistance um, with moving average, what traders would know as moving average, but really is known as moving fair value resistance, um, would be areas that I would look specifically into taking uh, some trades. But um, again, in a risk off environment, uh, the dollar typically does do well um, as long as the risk off event isn't actually um, originating in the US. So there is, again, that um, that could potentially be positive for the dollar. But overall, I think, um, you know, by the end of the year, the dollar index should be somewhere down here, meaning that um, if you are trading the dollar index, you know how to trade the dollar index, those are really the, the areas you're looking for. But if you're not trading the dollar index and you're just looking to take, you know, dollar shorts on dollar crosses, then you're looking at prices coming up to these areas and then looking for confirmation that the dollar is a sell on the dollar index and then looking for uh, sell trades at areas on those dollar crosses like the dollar yen or if you're looking at the dollar swiss <clears throat> and looking at the dollar yen <clears throat> we do again my my bias you know is to again get you know short on this currency pair and this is where you know those levels um would be in order to look for some short trades and so if you are looking at pullbacks, I would say anywhere within there would be decent. You do also have a level of uh, uh, resistance right there and support that actually is quite decent. And I would say also as well, you do have this area here, all right? That area there from a support and resistance level. So um, within that large area of um, of supply that area there we've also got that zone right there <clears throat> as looking for uh, potential short trades yeah the fed is hiking soon but they are um sorry hiking but they're soon to pause whereas the bank of japan are actually holding rates at the moment and possible yield curve adjustment um is a monetary policy which is actually designed to appreciate their currency. So uh, with the Bank of Japan, for me, I'm looking at any um, pullbacks on the dollar um, 
yen to look for uh, short trades um, for the future. Um, and I think the Japanese yen is going to be a decent buy, and especially if you know risk off uh, persists, and so that also does strengthen the um, the yen. Um, uh, dollar Swiss, and so dollar Swiss uh, similar to dollar yen, but not so bullish on the um, on the Swiss franc. You do have uh, these areas here, quite wide zones of supply, and you also have actually quite a wide zone of demand that kind of comes all the way down here. And so, when again, when you get these wide areas of supply and demand, just break down those zones with obvious areas of support and resistance on the daily or even the intraday, right? So that's what you're really looking for. Um, and I think if I was looking for any kind of uh, um, short trades, I think that'd be the first area to look for. Um, any shorts, any long trades, really kind of, I would say all the way down at these, the, the really the lower end of that zone in order to get uh, long, but um, not really a pair I'm looking for any kind of opportunities at the moment, either to buy the dollar or sell the Swiss franc. But um, yeah, those are the uh, the areas to look for. Uh, dollar CAD, you had uh, decent demand, and if you were looking to buy the uh, the US dollar from a um, shorting perspective, buying the Canadian dollar, I don't know really why you would want to buy the Canadian dollar. You do have some uh, hidden supply there. Which is yeah, I would probably say that's yeah, that's it. Um, the Federal Reserve is still expected to to hike rates, and the Bank of Canada are pausing, and so in a risk off environment, I would expect really prices to to kind of drift higher, or at least if they come down, to be supported in some way um, down in in that uh, demand zone around there. So for me, um, if I was looking to trade this pair, it would be um, to the long side would be more of my bias, but. Again, I'm not really looking to trade this pair, but if I was, the, the, the US dollar should be the more of a buy over the Canadian dollar, especially in the risk off environment. Um, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and so um, the New Zealand dollar uh, does have a decent uh, demand zone in and around there. Um, and then you also have uh, some supply, which uh, looks like it looks like let me um yeah it's kind of held around there so supply and then you've got a bit more supply up top as well so if you do want to be a buyer of the uh, US dollar then you're looking at actually shorts probably right now if you're looking at buying the New Zealand dollar Again, um, against the US dollar, you're looking at really, I'd probably say more buyers at the lows right here. Again, in a risk off environment, uh, I would expect, in fact, the federal, uh, the US dollar to again um, appreciate over the uh, New Zealand dollar. Both central banks are hiking soon uh, to pause, but I think in the short term, I would expect really the, uh, the US dollar to actually strengthen over the New Zealand dollar, uh, barring any kind of. Um, uh, banking crisis developments. So if there are new um, a new bank that comes out that's gonna you know potentially go under. Um, deposits aren't going to be saved from uh, you know you know from the uh, Federal Reserve. Then um, potentially you could have a, obviously the uh, New Zealand actually New Zealand dollar start to um, appreciate because money will come out of the dollar because the risk um, sentiment is obviously emanating from the US. But if it's not, then. Um, I would say the, uh, the dollar should be a potential buy um, in the very, very, very short term. But again, not really a pair that I'm looking at trading. You've got the British pound versus the US dollar. And fundamentally, um, the, the pound this week, they ended up hiking by 25 basis points. But um, the general consensus by the banks is that uh, they are actually expected to pause in May, and so um, the pause, whereas the Federal Reserve are expected to probably, you know, uh, hike in, um, in I think it's May is their next meeting, is it March? Yeah, I think it might be May is their next meeting, and so um, you could actually see uh, a decent shorting opportunity somewhere around these highs, 
Yeah, and again, this is providing that um, you know the uh, there's no more uh, no more crisis. The uh, dust kind of settles on the, uh, the the banking issue, um, and so from a monetary but from a monetary policy perspective, I would expect the um, the, uh, the dollar to actually strengthen in and around somewhere around these highs, just based off of the fact that they've got probably one more hike in them, whereas the Bank of England. Um, are probably likely looking to uh, to hold rates, but also as well, um, just to back that up. So the Bank of England hawks see turning point as inflation expectations cool, and so um, in order for the Bank of England to really continue to hike inflation, they have to see inflation really being um, a problem and um, and going higher, right? Because in order to combat inflation, you need to hike interest rates. And if they see inflation as coming down, right, and the hawks, the hawkish uh, central bankers at the uh, Bank of England are, are actually, um, you know, thinking to themselves, well, in fact, inflation is probably coming down, yeah, then it looks like the central bank is less likely to hike rates and so um, that's the reason for the potential uh, pause in rates, whereas the Fed are potentially looking to hike rates. And so if prices do drift higher, I do think that this could potentially be the ceiling. Prices could go obviously a little bit higher than that as well, potentially looking out for a stop hunt and then start to come back down. But overall, um, as we start to go into the second half of the year, this potentially could be a nice buying opportunity for the pound if you're looking to buy the, uh, the pound. Um, looking at the euro dollar and the euro dollar um, this week kind of suffered a little bit from the um, the Deutsche Bank, the recent Deutsche Bank um, issue um, and the sell off simply because the uh, Deutsche Bank is a European bank. And uh, if there's a banking crisis also coming from Europe, um, then that's going to affect the uh, the euro and so you know we've had this area here again it's not necessarily a fantastic zone but there is an area here of resistance that price has um you know reacted from within that demand zone and if i was looking for an another area within this demand zone if prices do break that then it's just best to kind of look down into the lower time frames and then see where those um maybe support and resistance areas are me personally i'm gonna uh, probably likely to maybe look for something around here that would be quite decent as an area that's been traded um in the past and so there might be a, an opportunity around these areas or at the absolute lows is going to be around here. Yeah, so those are the areas that I'd probably start to look for buying opportunities. So um, on a lower time frame, but um, from a daily perspective, um, my bias is still actually to continue to buy the euro over the, the uh, dollar. So any pullbacks into these zones, I think are going to be uh, nice buying uh, opportunities. Um, the euro, um, one second, uh, the euro area economy strengthens more on service sector surge. So composite PMI rises to 54.1 above economist estimate of 52%, uh, but manufacturing upper stalls as new orders continue to fall. But the eurozone economic growth continued to pick up in March, driven exclusively by the service sector as concerns over energy supplies recede. And so if the, um, the economy for the euro continues to um, outperform, um, as expected, then for me, I think the euro is more of a buy than the uh, than do than the dollar. <clears throat> Moving on to the Australian dollar, US dollar, and the Australian dollar again, hiking rates from the Fed and the RBA are actually expected to pause. Um, now, I am actually quite uh, bullish on the Australian dollar. Reason being more so is because of the China component. And if China actually um, continue to um, reopen and the reopening goes well, then a beneficiary of that should be uh, Australia. Now, would I buy the Australian dollar against the US dollar? Um, potentially, yes. <laughs> but I think for now, um, I really wanna see um, uh, China 
uh, data come out a lot stronger. And if it does, then I think actually any pullbacks into this zone and even um, the zone below it can be a really good buying opportunity if prices you know start to fall due to potential short-term risk off and if it comes down to the 65 area and then we get you know strong data out of china um as everybody starts to actually end um you know their, their rate hiking soon as well because everyone's going to be in the same boat and i say when i say everybody i mean all central banks are going to be in the same boat because all central banks are looking to pause rates and then comes well um what what else do we look at in terms of a divergence? Who's going into a recession and who's not, right? And I think the RBA will be best placed to avoid a recession if at the same time, the US are going into a recession and China are reopening. So um, I think this is gonna be really, a really nice area, the 65 uh, cent area for a buying opportunity uh, for the Australian dollar, but we'd have to get down there and see what happens fundamentally and gold right finally gold and gold uh you know pretty much pretty obvious um what's happened uh, with the dollar um with the uncertainty and you know risk off sen um, sentiment um gold has done its thing also as well um with uh, recessions being potentially priced in <clears throat> uh within the next maybe six to nine months by the end of the year um, a lot of the smart money who were seeing this well in advance and uh, for anyone who's been following me, following me for any length of time would have known that, you know, pretty much in my videos, I was, uh, you know, looking to, you know, buy um, gold or saying to potentially buy gold, not financial advice, of course, but explaining that there was a lot of um, uh, central banks that increased their gold buying. And when that happens, um, you know, traders kind of expect prices to just jump and go, you know, um, you know, to the moon, right? But that doesn't necessarily happen because, you know, the buying that these central banks have to do take can take time because of liquidity issues. And so this can take months and months and months. It could take six months for, you know, uh, for, for banks to do their, you know, their buying. And now we're seeing actually, you know, the forecast, you know, come true, right? in terms of you know having that long-term or longer-term bias as to why you should have been buying gold or the reasons for buying gold uh, back in you know September, October, November, right? Yes, the dollar was strengthening um, you know at the time, uh, but you know there were um, it obviously indicators that um, you know there was going to be a recession um, potentially going into 2023, 2024, and so. Um, if that was obviously your trade idea, now it's paying off. So getting back to the present, I would say any pullbacks down into um, you know the 1900s now looks quite cheap, right? And the 1800s looks was even an even better bargain. Those are the areas to look for any kind of uh, any kind of buy trade, and there is a nice uh, accurate level of uh, support in there as well. I think you've got a nice decent area of support in there and so yeah i think these areas are decent for uh, any kind of uh, buy trades for gold if you are a gold uh, you know bug um if you think the dollar's obviously gonna you know get um uh, gonna strengthen which i actually don't um then you're looking for any kind of short trades. not sure whether you're gonna do that right now i mean there is obviously a supply zone here from way back in uh april uh, 2022 but um, I think the path for least resistance is to the upside. And so uh, that brings me to the end of the uh, technical analysis and fundamentals. And I'm gonna get to answering the uh, question from that gentleman. So again, I thank uh, this gentleman for his uh, really good question, which I will reread again, which he said uh, he was about uh, asking previously, we saw the Federal Reserve hike interest rates in the US and according to your teachings, once interest rates are hiked, currencies become strong or gain strength in compared to the partner. But on Wednesday, after the Fed hiked rates by 0.25% uh, or 25 basis points, we saw the market fall down. What is the reason, sir? Thank you very much. And it's a, it's a very common question and something that's, you know, kind of misunderstood by a lot of traders who are new to fundamental analysis. And so fundamental analysis is understanding current value, but also future potential value. 
And so if you're going to a, um, um, you know, Forex factory or anywhere with an economic calendar and looking to press buy or sell when the data is released, you're already too late because um, the market has priced in, yeah, that um, that news data, right? They've done, they've done their forecasts. And so, you know, the, um, the 25 basis point hike, yeah, 25 basis point hike was pretty much um, priced in and one of the ways you can you can find out um, where or how you know an, uh, which interest rates are actually uh, baked in and hiked uh, in uh, priced into the market is if you go to the CMA CMA group um, and I'll leave the, the link in the uh, description box below and this basically tells you um, whether hikes are being priced in or not. So at the moment, you see on the top right hand side where it says probabilities, you'll see ease, no change, and you'll see hike. And before the um, uh, the rate hike, yeah, um, in the weeks leading up to it, in fact, there was something like an, an 80% uh, chance that the probability was saying that there was gonna be a hike. So. Um, the market had already kind of pretty much priced in the 25 basis point um, uh, move right into the market. And so when they actually hiked rates, what the market is actually now thinking or, you know, was was thinking up until that point was what is the Federal Reserve going to do after announcing the hike? Right. So when. On Wednesday, when the FOMC statement came out, it was all about what are we going to see now? What is the future, right? What's going to happen to the dollar? What the Federal Reserve is going to do to potential hikes or holds in the future? And so on that day, on that evening, um, I in, in the uh, private members Discord group, um, I was posting some analysis from, um, from uh, you know, the experts and the uh, analysts that were basically saying that um, the, you know, you can see uh, BI jerseys says Powell's comment that the committee considered a pause was taken as dovish by the markets. Regardless, they didn't recede to a cut. So as you mentioned, the key here isn't whether they'll hike uh, one more time, but rather how long it will be before they cut. That is, in my view, the challenge the Fed has once again. And so... Um, now we're talking about not necessarily just rate, you know, rate hikes. In fact, we're talking about potential rate cuts in the future. And so that's what the market is now pricing in. They're not pricing in the 25 basis points because that's already been priced in and it was priced in, you know, a week or so before the announcement. Yeah. What they're now pricing in is actually the fact that there's probably like to be a pause or even a cut. And so cuts do the opposite from uh, hiking rates, which is, you know, to devalue the currency rather than appreciate a currency, which is what hikes would do. And so this is why you saw the market fall down on a rate hike, because sometimes some people might call it or some analysts call it a, a dovish hike where um you know the uh, the hike yes is a hike but at the end of the day um it could have been potentially a forced hike um due to inflation or the fact that the um central bank wasn't um uh, re didn't remain hawkish and say okay well we're planning to hike you know 10 more times and buy 50 or you know 100 basis points in fact they were actually thinking about pausing so the market has to revalue the dollar based on their one month, three month and six month and even one year expectations of what the Federal Reserve is gonna do. And so they're not looking to high rates or appreciate their currency, they're looking to potentially pause and there may be a cut, so hence the reason why after the rate hike, you saw the market fall down.
yeah so it's not about look going to forex factory and then looking waiting for the announcement i remember those days many 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 years ago where you would go to forex factory would look at the calendar wait for it wait for the countdown and as soon as the positive news came out you would try and press buy no 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 those those days are you know that's that's long 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 gone that 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 strategy is 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 not never going to serve you well it's all about reading up on what the future uh, statements are going to uh, are likely to look like what the um, actually what the current statement is and what the future is likely to um, uh, look like based on what they're saying in their statements because they will tell you what they are looking to do and so again the statement was considered hawkish I'm sorry the statement was considered dovish hence the reason why you saw um, the market sell off anyways hope that explains it um, take care if you have any more questions good questions by the way um, then I will uh, answer it at the next um, weekly uh, video and uh, I hope you have a great trading week guys and take care.